What's going on there, YouTube? And welcome back to another comic book video. This is the channel where we sit down and cover different comic book stories from different comic book companies. Today, we're going to jump back over to Marvel Comics and we're going to do another full story video. Now, this one is going to be based over The Punisher. A while back, we covered Dark Reign, a period in time in Marvel Comics where Norman Osborn was was the leader of the Defense for America. He took over S.H.I.E.L.D., replaced S.H.I.E.L.D. with Hammer. Now, with Norman Osborn used to being the Green Goblin, the Punisher knows that Norman Osborn is a bad guy. So what happens when you are Norman Osborn, the leader of Defense for America, being hunted down by the Punisher? Well, you sent all the forces you can to fight against the Punisher. This is Dark Reign Punisher, where Punisher fights against Norman Osborn and his forces, but sadly ends up dying. It is three videos combined into one big video. So I do hope you like today's video. And if you do, please hit that like button down below and also subscribe to the channel for more content to come in the near future. But I do hope you enjoy today's video. So we pick up with the Punisher being the Punisher. What I mean by that is because he is setting up a sniper. If you know the Punisher character, he is planning to kill somebody. Of course, if you saw the title of this video, you know that the character he is trying to kill is no other than Norman Osborn. Remember, Norman Osborn is a crooked person who was able to move up the chain of command to take over S.H.I.E.L.D. He got rid of S.H.I.E.L.D. and replaced it with Hammer. So, you have the Punisher take his shot at trying to kill Norman Osborn. You would think that this is too easy for the Punisher. Just set up shop and take out Norman Osborn in the first four pages. Well, no, because Norman Osborn brought in the Sentry. We all know that nothing at this point in Marvel Comics can stop the Sentry, especially not the Punisher, who is a regular human being. Of course, you have the Punisher be confronted by the Sentry, which he tells us that he did not plan for this. He did plan for the other members of the Dark Avengers. That is a little bit easier to plan for them. Except for the Sentry, he did plan something, but it's one of those hopefully it works kind of plans. So the Punisher goes around running, trying to get away from the Sentry, trying to get him to a certain location so he is able to get rid of the Sentry to slow him down. Where the Sentry literally just walks through everything the Punisher throws at him. There's even a point where the Sentry throws the Punisher to the ground. So it seems like this is the end for the Punisher. Except you have the Punisher stop the Sentry by saying that he had planted a bomb in a nearby hospital. So that makes the Sentry leave and gives the Punisher some time to do something. So you have the Sentry go there and of course when the Sentry gets to the hospital it was a fake bomb. This does make the Sentry very angry, so he does go back to bring in the Punisher. Except the Punisher is gone when the Sentry gets back to where he left the Punisher at. So now the question is, where is the Punisher? We see that the Punisher had escaped to his battle van. Which of course makes sense, except when the Punisher gets inside, you have someone hack the system of the Punisher battle van and tells him that he is here to help the Punisher. Tells him that the Sentry is still looking for him and the battle van is not going to protect the Punisher from the Sentry. So you have this man tell the Punisher to listen to him and he can help him escape. At this point, the Punisher really does not have a choice except to listen to this man and basically follow his instructions. So that what happens. You have the Punisher following this random man instructions that leads him throughout the subway station. 
When the Punisher gets to the location the man has sent him to, the Punisher passes out because of his injuries, but the guy is there to take the Punisher away somewhere else. So with the opening of the second chapter, we see the Punisher waking up after passing out from all of his injuries, where you have the Punisher wondering where in the world he is at at the moment, only to see the guy who basically saved his life walk into the room and the Punisher forcing him to tell us his name, which is just Henry. For the Punisher, he wants to know why this random person saved his life. Henry tells us two things. The first being that he is a top-notch hacker. Also the fact that he knows that Norman Osborn is a bad person and wants the Punisher to help stop Norman Osborn. So that leads into Henry showing a news clip of Norman Osborn being interviewed. Just like in our Dark Avengers videos, we see him being able to play with the media and make them believe whatever he says is true make them believe he is a good kind of guy. And so you have Henry tell the Punisher that he knows that Norman Osborn is evil because of what he found. Different kinds of criminal operations across the nation, probably the world. The problem is that he needs hard-hitting proof if they want to be able to land Norman Osborn in jail. And so you have the Punisher and Henry agree to work together, except you have the Punisher as Henry if he is ready to work together. Because this life the Punisher is part of, it can get Henry killed. And so you have Henry say yes, and that means that they are now partners. And so you have the Punisher and Henry begin to work together by going to one of the hidden gun shops of where Norman Osborn is holding onto a bunch of guns. You have Frank Castle go in and act like he is a regular person at first, except of course, the guy who is selling guns can tell Frank Castle is the Punisher. So out of nowhere, he hits a button and a bunch of guys disappear out of nowhere trying to kill the Punisher and we see him being able to take these guys down very quickly. The Punisher and Henry knew that something like this would happen. So after you have the Punisher take these guys out, you have him make the owner of the shop show him where they keep all of the guns at. Of course, the Punisher takes them all which then leads to the Punisher going around to the different criminal operations that Norman Osborn runs and destroying them, basically using some of the weapons that Norman Osborn had locked up at the shop. After the Punisher had destroyed each of these operations, well, of course, he takes pictures of each of the places as a way to say, this is where Norman Osborn money goes. It goes into these operations as a way to pay for everything else he has. Once you have the Punisher be able to get enough photos and bring them back over to Henry, Henry at first is excited to see that Norman Osborn's stuff is being destroyed. Except when he looks at the pictures, he gets sick to the stomach because what he sees is what the Punisher had done to these people. It is his first time seeing what the Punisher had done and how bad he killed those men. So Henry finally realized what he agreed to join in. The Punisher is serious about getting rid of Norman Osborn and his people. After the pictures of what the Punisher has been doing finally gets into the newspapers, the media is not painting this as, oh, these are hidden criminal operations of Norman Osborn. Right now, the newspapers are saying that these were just attacks being done by a random vigilante. And so you have Norman Osborn as the Hood if he can handle getting rid of the Punisher, which the Hood agrees to do this for Norman Osborn. Now you are probably wondering who is the Hood? Well, the Hood was this character who is on Norman Osborn Cabal. Norman Osborn Cabal was a group of people who worked under him, but to everyone else, they are allies working together to control America in the Dark Reign period. The Hood was a guy who used to be a regular thug who got motivated to be a criminal after seeing a fight between, I want to say, Electro and Daredevil. 
except he found items that were enchanted by Dormammu. We picked up with the hood interrogating some random thugs who worked for him, wondering how the Punisher was able to take down their businesses that belonged to the hood. Letting us know that Henry is that good of a packer, he was able to get the Punisher into places without alerting security teams. Switching over to the Punisher and Henry, we see them talking about the different places that they have hit and the ones they need to hit. Now this leads into Henry explaining how Norman Osborn is able to get away with these operations, stating that Norman Osborn is selling that crime has gone down. Except what he has done is take the crime off the streets and prevent people going door to door to achieve their crimes. Meaning that he's making it sure that no one sees what is happening. This leads into Henry pointing out another shop that needs to be hit that belongs to Norman Osborne. So the Punisher agrees to go there. With that being said, you have the Hood talking to his elite soldiers and getting them ready to take down the Punisher. I want you to realize something here. This is the Hood kind of thinking of himself as the new Kingpin of New York. With that being said, he thinks he is better than Kingpin ever was. Now, we get this mysterious person from the shadows that begins to judge the moves of the Hood, saying that every move the Hood has done were all dumb and not going to work, that this person knows the Punisher very well and knows how to take him down, what the Punisher weakness is, which is his mor moral code. Moral code. Man, I totally butchered that. Moral code. Now the last part of the third chapter is the Punisher attacking this random location. Remember that Henry has been able to stay one step ahead of the Hood and Norman Osborn, except this time it won't be like that. Because remember what I said just a moment ago, that the Hood was talking to an elite group of soldiers and having them planning something big for the Punisher. The Hood has someone who talked like he knew the Punisher very well. What I mean by all of this is that the Punisher has walked into a trap because when he gets inside, all of these forces begin to attack the Punisher. That is just the beginning because as soon as he takes these guys down, these vans pull up and it seems like they are SWAT teams. Except that is when Henry finds out that these guys are not police. They work for the hood. Except when he finds out, the Punisher ends up being cornered by them. Now, of course, the Punisher was not taken out because it would be too easy to take him out like that in his own book. So, they wouldn't kill him off this early in his own story. Either way, you have the Punisher show us that he took most of the SWAT team down. Then he checks in with Henry to let Henry know that they need to leave, that this was basically a trap and could mean Henry's location could be known as well by these guys. So this is pushing the Punisher and Henry into a corner. We switch over to the hood and the hood is of course, is just walking around his business is checking up for an update where he does get mad at the guy he left running the business except after that moment you have the hood be told that there is a problem with the Punisher plan. Of course, this is the moment he finds out that the elite soldiers he put together to go after the Punisher are failing, that those men are now calling for help because their men are gone now thanks to the Punisher. So you have the hood basically bring in a D grade villain known as the Grizzly to go after the Punisher, a man who wears a bear suit who may have the strength of a grizzly bear which does give us the chance to check up on the Punisher. And we see him fighting his way against those elite soldiers that the Hood have put together. 
Now you have these guys who think they still have the advantage because with their numbers and Punisher being a one man army, they have the upper advantage on taking down the Punisher. Except this is the Punisher. He is someone who can't be stopped. This dude has fought odds like this before. So these guys just don't understand that they have messed up and they are going to lose this battle. This is the moment we learned that the Grizzly wasn't really sent to go after the Punisher, except he was sent to go after Henry because whoever is this mysterious person working for the Hood was able to get the location of where Henry was at. You take out Henry, well, it makes it harder for the Punisher to complete his goal. Except when the Grizzly gets to what the Hood and his team thought was Henry location, was of course a false location and it blows up the place. So there goes Grizzly. So of course we see Henry and the Punisher meeting back up and letting us know that they have been pushed into a corner thanks to the Hood. Which leads into Henry freaking out because now they know that the Hood is on their case. The Hood is known as someone who is using demonic magic, which of course it scares Henry. But of course, it doesn't scare the Punisher, since he has been around for such a long time. So we see him pull out different heroes tech that heroes may have lost or left behind. And you have the Punisher tell Henry that he is ready to go after the Hood. To close on the fourth chapter, we see the Hood getting back to his base and of course knowing that everything he had planned, well, has failed. And he's mad at our mysterious character. And we come to find out that who is this mysterious character? It is Microchip, aka David Linus. And this is huge because Microchip died a while back. He should not be here, but thanks to the Hood, he was able to bring Microchip back and make Microchip actually help the Hood out to take down the Punisher. So this is huge because Microchip was a close friend of the Punisher and was Punisher's tech person. Now remember that we saw the Punisher holding on to a bunch of old superhero tech. One of those was Ant-Man's helmet which of course gave Ant-Man the ability to go big or small. So when this pizza gets delivered to the security team that is watching over the base of the hood, at first people think it's your average pizza, except people begin to die left and right. Only to see the Punisher pop out of one of these guys' heads and grows regular size. So the Punisher was able to sneak his way into the base of the hood. And with that happening, of course, we know what that means. The Punisher is ready to go full strength on these guys, just going around and wrecking folks left and right. These guys don't stand a chance against the Punisher. It's the Punisher. And so we get pages on pages of the Punisher just going around and beating these guys down. They don't realize what they're going up against. It is the Punisher. This man had fought armies before and took armies down. And so this is them realizing they have messed up, truthfully. Now here comes the moment we know that is going to come up very soon, which of course the Punisher meeting up with Microchip. Because remember, these two used to work together. The reason why this is such a big deal is mainly on the idea that Microchip died and the hood basically brought him back. This is huge again because Microchip died and should have stayed dead. So with him being here, it makes the Punisher angry to see him here at the moment. Also, you have Microchip actually try to convince the Punisher to actually work with him in the hood. Give up and let the hood win. The hood has the ability to bring back the Punisher's family, except the Punisher knows that his wife would not want him to make a deal with the devil. And so he tells Microchip, no. This leads into Microchip showing us that he has other super villains with him and then sending them out there to fight against the Punisher. The main villain they sent out, of course, is Mr. Hyde. 
We talked about him before in our This Fight Lasts a few pages, except the Punisher is able to win thanks to Henry playing some kind of frequency that really bothers the ears of Mr. Hyde and takes him out of the picture now. Now with Mr. Hyde being taken down, this gives the Punisher the chance to plant his C4 in the building, telling us that their goal was not to kill the Hood, not just yet, but to basically cripple his business, slow him down somehow, find a way to push him into a corner. How do you do that? Blow up what he claims as his throne room, his temple. It was this place, to be honest. So you have the Punisher plant his C4, and in the next page, the building is blown up. The book ends with the hood going down into a lower basement level. I want you to remember what I said earlier about the hood. Remember, his powers were based around the idea of him gaining his powers thanks to using dark magic. Well, he goes down and uses his dark magic to revive a bunch of people. These people are villains that the Punisher may have killed or had died for other reasons. Either way, he is going to use these people to help him hunt down the Punisher. And this is where we are going to end today's video. future, but I do hope you enjoy today's video. So with the opening of this book, we pick up where our last Punisher video left off at. At the end of our last video, we saw the Hood use his dark magic powers to bring back a bunch of villains from the dead. Now most of these villains were killed by the Punisher throughout the years, or we are told that, but actually that is not true. But anyways, so it's the Hood kind of hoping that by bringing these guys back from the dead, they will be eager to get revenge against the Punisher. Now at the same time, the Hood is having this meeting with these villains while the Punisher is again attacking another criminal facility that is owned by Norman Osborn. Remember that in our last video, the Punisher new tech person is a guy named Henry. They have a common goal to bring down Norman Osborn because they know how bad he truly is. Now getting back to the hood and the villains he brought back to life, well the big question comes up. What if these villains don't want to kill the Punisher? Just enjoy the second chance they have with life. Well you have the hood mention that the spell he used only gives them 30 days and that is it. So if they want to live beyond that point, well, they will need him to extend their new lease on life. The only way he's going to help them though is if they actually end up doing what he wants them to do, which is to kill the Punisher. So these villains really don't have a choice if they want to live again. Also, the hood tells these villains that if one of them kills the Punisher, well then they all win. This to them is a perfect deal because you have an army of villains that the Punisher has supposedly killed about to go after the Punisher and hopefully to kill him. This is a win-win situation for them. Also, we see that the Punisher was able to blow up another of Norman Osborn criminal facilities. Except we can see that there are some issues between the villains, where you have some who don't really want to go after the Punisher. They just want to go enjoy their new 30-day lease on life. Most of them want to go after the Punisher for revenge. The problem is that some people think they should be in charge. You have a group of them begin to butt heads on who should be in charge of the planning on killing the Punisher. Finally, putting a focus on the Punisher, we see him waking up after taking down another one of Norman Osborn facilities. Remember, he is working now alongside a new character named Henry. Henry being his new tech person, but we can see that there are some issues between the two of them. For Henry, he feels like if they are going to work together, well then they should get to know one another. Except for the Punisher, he does not feel like doing that. Makes it easier for the Punisher to move on just in case something happens to Henry. 
Henry hates that, but for the Punisher, why should he care for what Henry thinks? We then pick up with George W. Bridge, short for George Washington Bridge, was part of the Six Pack. They were a mercenary group whose name was changed to Six Pack when it was being led by X-Men character Cable. After that, he went on to work for S.H.I.E.L.D. He was someone able to track down the Punisher. He had done it multiple times. So we see a group of villains that the Hood had brought back to life to take his son hostage and killed his wife. They are going to force him to help them find the Punisher. The next day, we see the Punisher going to a Catholic church where he is going to confess for his sins. Tell you the truth, this is the first time for me to see the Punisher at a church. I really wasn't a huge fan of the Punisher growing up until now. Either way, it is him going hoping to give forgiveness for the killings he has done and the killings he is going to do soon. Except when he's confronted by the father of the church, instead of seeing the father of the church, well, he sees the hood, letting him know that the hood is beginning to mess with his head. To continue the idea of the hood messing with the Punisher, well, the Punisher begins to see his dead wife. Remember, the lynch point of the Punisher origin is that his wife and kids were killed. That led him down the path of becoming the Punisher. So seeing her is making him go crazy. Heck, that leads into him seeing his children, except his children are grown now. To show this is all some kind of head game, it is when his daughter tells him she wants him to meet someone. Of course, she introduces the Hood as a boyfriend, which tells us in The Punisher that this is some kind of sick joke. The Hood offers to bring back his family with his dark magic powers. Come to find out that the Punisher was having a bad dream because he then wakes up in the back of the truck that belongs to Henry. This leads to more issues between the two characters. To Henry, he is kind of tired of the Punisher only wanting to kill people, not just take down some low level thugs who does not deserve to die. The problem is that the Punisher does not care what Henry thinks and feels. To him, he wants to put bad people in the ground. He will continue that. And so it is the Punisher telling Henry to get over it or just go ahead and leave. There's a moment where we see Microchip, who was the last partner of the Punisher before he was killed. Of course, he was another person brought back to life thanks to the Hood. And we see him talking to Megatake. Megatake is a character that is a little bit complicated. Long story short, he was a character who kind of went into a video game and got powers. Either way, this man is a walking computer. He can go into computers and use computers to complete certain tasks. The current task is to find location of Henry, the Punisher's new tech person. Shifting the focus back on GW Bridge, we see him and his son is still being held hostage, except they are wanting him to help them find the Punisher. It was something he was great at in the past. At first, you have him say no as a way to protect the Punisher. But of course, to save the life of his son, he will have no choice but to help them out and he does agree to help. We then pick up with the Wraith, or is it Wrath? I'll say Wraith. And this was a character who died a while back. He was a Spider-Man character who was the brother of Gene DeWolf. He was one of the villains brought back to life thanks to the Hood, except he is quickly killed off by the Punisher. And you have Henry tell him that his S.H.I.E.L.D. file said he was dead. So how in the world is this man back here now? Now it doesn't stop there because we pick up with another villain who was brought back to life and his name is Birdman. Literally, it is Birdman. Now, back in the day, he was not a powerhouse of a character, except in this book, he is a man who was mutated and got all sorts of powers. We see him right now eating pieces of the human body from the woman he had killed. Then there's a moment where he is greeted by a police force and they are quickly taken down by him with all of his different powers. Takes a lady hostage as well, but he is confronted by the Punisher who is here to kill him. 
With the opening of the third chapter, we see the Punisher fighting against the Birdman. Honestly, this character name is really annoying. Every time I think about the name, my mind thinks of the rapper Birdman or even the basketball player who used to play for the Denver Nuggets in the Miami Heat. Either way, with the Punisher fighting this guy, you have Henry telling the Punisher that he just got some kind of signal. And when he was able to figure out what it is, well, he can't believe who it is. And to the Punisher at first, he can't believe what he is seeing either. Now you can tell right off the bat that this is not your usual Avengers. For one, how some of the characters are dressed. Secondly, some of the characters we are seeing right now on this Avengers team in this book were not on the Avengers at this point in Marvel Comics, so we know something is up. But either way, you have the Punisher begin to fight against all of the Avengers. Now this fight does last for a good portion of the book, but once the Punisher is able to escape, well, we can see this fake Captain America tell us that the death of the Punisher is very important to them. Meaning that, of course, these guys are fake. It is the villains trying to kill the Punisher. I should not have said the Punisher had escaped because he does come back and begin the process of taking these guys out. To the Punisher, he knows that these guys are not the real Avengers. One, with how they look, but also the fact how they are acting and moving. These are not the Avengers. They should have been able to take him down very easily, except they did not. So you have the Punisher being able to take these guys down and proceed to move on because Henry calls into the Punisher, telling him a S.H.I.E.L.D. agent has put out a stress signal of course, that being GW Bridges. Now remember, Megatake and Microchip were trying to find Henry because he is the new tech person for the Punisher. Also, if you remove Henry, well, that will be a big blow for the Punisher and make it easy for the villains to kill him off. So at this moment, you have Megatake climb out of the computer and knock out Henry. There's a scene I'm going to skip over, well not over completely, but most of it. It is the origin of Henry, where we learn that he's the son of Jigsaw, the arch nemesis in a way to the Punisher. And this is huge to find out. Why is the son of Jigsaw trying to work with the Punisher for? Now getting back to the present day, for Henry, we see him getting back up after being knocked out by Megatake. He was able to grab the hoverboard he made and begin the process to escape. Except that is when Megatake sends another villain after him, but of course to kill him. Getting back to the Punisher, well he is trying to fight against a wave of villains who were sent after to kill him. Now, now you have Microchip tell the Punisher that Henry is busy at the moment, but also that he begins to beg the Punisher to go ahead and give up. If the Punisher does that, well that could bring back both families of Microchip and the Punisher as well. Now to the Punisher, the only thing he wants back in his life, of course, is his family. Except not in the way where dark magic is used, because it is just wrong to so many different levels. So of course, he is telling Microchip no on the idea of bringing his family back to life. Now for Henry, this is the moment we learn that he is nothing like his father because while he is being chased down by one of the villains, well it gets to the point where the villain thinks he's about to get the chance to kill Henry. Well Henry was able to trick the villain hoping to just get away, except he ends up killing the villain off. And for Henry, this was his first human kill, which of course makes him sick to his stomach. Getting back to GW Bridges, we see him breaking out of his vines and trying to take down the villains so he can save him and his son. There is a moment where it seems he may be over his head and could be killed, except that is when he gets help from the Punisher and you have these two guys fight against these villains together. Now honestly, you would think that everything is going to be okay now. Sadly, you have GW Bridges get thrown out of the window and lands on top of a car. Also, you have the Punisher get surrounded by a bunch of villains making it seem like it is the end of the line for him. 
The last page of this chapter, we pick up with two detectives who are in a graveyard. And this is not a random graveyard. This graveyard was holding the bodies of the family of the Punisher. Someone came, dug up the bodies, and took the bodies with them. The question is, who? With the fifth chapter, we see the Punisher waking up in some kind of room made for a ritual, where you have the hood offer the Punisher a big choice, which is to kill G.W. Bridges, who is bound on top of some table. If the Punisher does this, well, the hood will be able to bring back the Punisher wife and kids, even bring back Microchip's family as well. So the question is, will he do it? Because while he is wondering if he should do it, well, all of the memories begin to rush back into his mind about his family, him thinking that maybe he should go ahead and bring back his family. Except he doesn't because to him, it is something that his wife and kids did not want him to do. So instead, he turns around and used the knife to kill another one of the villains to show that he will not do what the hood wants him to do. Except you have microchip takes matters in his own hands. He pulls out a gun and shoots to kill GW Bridge to get rid of him. And of course, it does what the hood said it would do bring back the families of both the Punisher and Microchip. Now you have the Punisher tell another villain to basically kill everyone, use his powers to burn everybody away just to get rid of them because this is just morally wrong to do, which of course this villain burned down every single person that was trying to come back to life. So the family of the Punisher and Microchip are both killed again by this villain and to the hood, this is a mess of situation. Like how can the Punisher be okay with killing his family all over again? There is a moment where you have the Punisher and the hood begin to battle against each other. Except there is a moment where you have the hood being able to get the Punisher down on the ground and holding a gun to his head. This is the perfect moment for the hood to kill off the Punisher. That is what he was hired to do by Norman Osborn. Except you have the Punisher tell the hood that he knows about his wife and daughter. That if the Punisher is not let go, something will happen to the wife and daughter of the hood. So they come to make a deal and the hood lets the Punisher leave. Now after leaving the hood behind, well you have him meeting up with Henry. This is more of Henry and the Punisher kind of breaking up the deal. Because before the Punisher had left the hood behind, well the hood told the Punisher that Henry is the son of Jigsaw. Again, the arch nemesis of the Punisher. Even though Henry says that he is trying to be a better person than his father to the Punisher, it does not matter. One, because he lied about who he is and he is the son of the man who has caused so much pain for the Punisher. And this The opening of this book, we see that Henry, who we saw in the beginning of our Punisher videos, become the new tech person for the Punisher. Also that Henry is the son of Jigsaw, of course being someone that the Punisher has fought so many times. Now thanks to our last video where the Punisher got into a fight with the Hood, the two of them separated and Henry is trying to find the Punisher. The next page, we see that Norman Osborn is beginning the process to hunt down the Punisher. Remember that Norman Osborn has sent the hood after the Punisher because the Punisher was the one who kept messing with Norman Osborn businesses. So you have Norman Osborn getting tired of waiting for the hood to take care of the Punisher and decides to take care of it himself. So finally, we focus on the Punisher. We see him chilling in his battle van. He knows that Norman Osborn is coming soon. So he knows he has to be ready for something, which of course, you see Norman Osborn just firing a bunch of missiles 
to the ground. It is him just making a statement that he is trying to get rid of the Punisher. So you see Norman Osborn celebrating before actually getting confirmation that he had actually killed off the Punisher. You have one of his agents tell him that he missed the Punisher. The Punisher is still alive and of course is on the run. So if you are Norman Osborn sending in the one person he knows that will kill off the Punisher for sure, which of course is Dakin, the son of Wolverine. He is the one who is going to kill off the Punisher. Getting back to the Punisher, we focus on the character running into Hammer agents first. Of course, Hammer agents are what S.H.I.E.L.D. agents used to be before Norman Osborn took over S.H.I.E.L.D. at the end of Secret Invasion. Either way, this section is used to give us a warm up before we dive into Dakin coming in here and wiping the floor of the Punisher. So we see the Punisher being able to run away, kill some people, but with a broken leg and holes from bullets in his body as well. He has no choice but to run away into the sewers hoping that he can get away. With this fight between the two characters, you don't want this fight between these two characters to end so quickly. So we have to make sure that this first fight leads with the Punisher actually being the one to win this fight. We know that Dakin, the son of Wolverine, someone who is a trained assassin, should have been the one to win this fight. Sadly, like I said, the Punisher was the one who wins. So we are going to wrap up this book right here at this moment because we quickly get into the second fight between Dakin and the Punisher. At first, you have Marvel paint this picture that these two are maybe at an even level, except with Dakin having a healing factor, of course, that gives him the edge over the Punisher, where we can see Dakin just cutting up the Punisher to the point he is just a pile of himself. Dakin making sure that there is no way the Punisher can come back. Of course, we know he does, but for the moment, though, the Punisher has been killed off by Dakin and Norman Osborn. And this is the end of today's video. So please hit that like button down below and also subscribe to the channel for more content to come in the near future. Also, any suggestions on books I should read? Well, please let me know in the comments below because you never know. Your suggestion could be a future video down the road. But I do hope you enjoy today's video.